wolf packs in Yellowstone are basically the same as wolf packs everywhere else, although there's a variation on their pack structure that's maybe not seen quite as much in other areas. A wolf pack is essentially an extended family unit. But what we're seeing in Yellowstone is that occasionally uh, wolves from outside that family unit will insert themselves into the pack, um, making non-relatives part of the fabric of the pack. We also see sometimes too that uh, more than just the lead female and the lead male will breed. Sometimes the lead male will breed several females, the most dominant female, and up to three subordinate females he may breed. Now the survival of those pups in the pack is oftentimes variable and oftentimes not good, but that changed the pack structure quite a bit. Sometimes we've even seen more than one male breed and more than one female breed. So this increases the complexity of packs quite a bit. The breeding rules that are seen in other packs throughout North America aren't quite uh, the same in Yellowstone. And we think this has to do with the abundant food available to wolves and also the high density of wolves in Yellowstone. In other words, there's a close proximity to other wolf packs. And so we actually get situations sometimes where a female wolf may leave one pack and go into the territory of another and breed with another male wolf, either from another pack or a floating male, and then move back to her pack having bred with an outside member. And that's really promoted by high density of wolves. Proximity and opportunity in Yellowstone is greater than in other wolf systems where wolf density is less. So we really have the same pack structure in Yellowstone as we do in other areas, but we have a lot of variations on that because of proximity, density, and food. Uh, but essentially the same rules apply.